not my fault. No look. Hey guys. All right. So I'm gonna try to get a video out here before I go to work. So I'm probably gonna get tongue twisted. As my dad used to say, my tangle's probably going to get all tongued up. So I'm going to be like, trying to run through this real quick. This is on the basics of making bread. Who doesn't like homemade bread? Come on, guys. Like, homemade bread, cooking with your own grains. I mean, think about this for a minute. You grow your own grain. Like, you grow your own wheat. And... You know, you do everything yourself, get it harvested, and, you know, put it up. And then you're able to take that grain and grind it into enough flour to make bread. To make your own bread with your own flour. And then take that a little bit further. Okay, first of all, the bread that I make is a no need dough. So it has to sit, it's just, it's just flour, water, and remember, don't use tap water. You know, if you have a rainwater collection system, a good filtered water system, purified water, you know, something like that. And then yeast, and a little bit of salt, okay. It do, the recipe does not call for sugar. So with a yeast, think about this. You can make your own yeast. You can use potatoes to make your own yeast. If you grow those potatoes yourself and use those potatoes to make your yeast, you use that homemade yeast from your homegrown potatoes in your bread. Okay? And the salt. Okay, well, you can't grow salt yourself. But you can get and use the Redmond's Real Salt or the Himalayan Pink Salt, okay? Just takes a little bit of it. It says a quarter teaspoon. That's it. That's what my recipe calls for. There's no oil in it, nothing like that. Just the yeast, the salt, the water, and the flour. That's it, okay? Now, all this ingredients, you've grown the wheat yourself ground it into the flour yourself the water is clean you know pure you don't have to worry about it, all any chemicals or anything like that in it you grew the potatoes yourself made the yeast out of the, out of the potatoes yourself and you've got the just say you know the real salt put those ingredients together mix it up and my recipe calls for three cups of flour to one and a half cups of water and a quarter teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of yeast. Mix that all up. You know, it turns into kind of a, it's not like your dry ball of dough, but it's kind of like your, it, you know, it's sticky, but it's not too bad. And then you take and you let that sit. It has to sit between 12 to 18 hours. At the end of that 18 hour, 12 to 18 hours, I usually try to go for at least the 12. You can you can push through, you know, to make it earlier, but the bread is very dense if you do that. <clears throat> I try to push for at least the 12 hours. At the end of that 12 hours, you take 12 to 18 hours. You take the dough out of the bowl, you know, you have to flour your surface and your hands, whatever. You know, again, you use your homegrown flour, homegrown wheat, you know, and, you know, your homemade flour. And you use that and get it to where it, you just get it to where it's, not real sticky you don't have to knead it it's a no knead dough 
what I do is I put it on, you know, my floured surface. And I just kind of roll it around a little bit, you know, get it to where it's, you know, not sticky. And then I shape it into the shape of my loaf pan, but you can use a Dutch oven, you can use a baking dish, whatever. I shape it to the shape of my loaf pan, make sure my loaf pan is greased. Now, what I usually try to do is I try to use real butter. I used to use cooking spray, this stuff is horrible for you, it's nasty. So, real butter. Or you can use, you know, say you have... Well, I don't know. Personally, I would stick with the real butter. And I'd take that real butter made from the milk and cream from your own dairy cow. Okay, so that's homemade. Straight up homemade. <clears throat> Went off. Anyway. Um, and then you put your dough in the pan. Cover it and let it sit for another one to two hours until, you know, it rises. I usually make two at a time. One batch makes one loaf. So I usually make at least two at a time. So I have two loaves of bread because we go through it really fast. You know, let it rise for another one to two hours. And then you pop it in the oven at 475 degrees. I always keep another, you know, some more butter, again, homemade butter from your dairy cow, you know, your milk. And you have to stay on top of it. You cannot set a timer. You've got to set a timer or something. 30 minutes, 475 degrees, because if not, you will burn it, period. Been there, done that. Pull it out of the oven within that last 5, 10 minutes. And I take more real butter and just brush it across the top to where the top is just covered with the butter. Pop it back in there for another minute or so and pull it out. And it's beautiful. That bread is awesome. And it actually turns out better than any other bread recipe I've ever used. So that's a really, a really amazing mess recipe. So anyway, so here's... That's my recipe, but here's the recipe out of the recipes out of the book. All right, so here we go, guys. Making bread is not difficult. Like other activities that we soon enough take for granted, such as driving a car and planting a garden, several steps must be linked in sequence. That sequence, however, is somewhat flexible. You can start that. Sorry, I'm trying to eat as well. I have to be there at three, so. There are a few rules in baking. Few measurements that must be precise. Making bread intimidates people because the behavior of yeast mystifies them. They don't quite trust it. And the steps seem long and complex. But after you've done it a few times, you will assimilate, assimilate this process until you can make bread with a light heart and confidence. I don't need the recipe anymore to make that bread. Honestly, I might make some tomorrow. Chloe's like, you should. <laughs> My problem is I don't know where I would set it. Anyway. About yeast. Baker's yeast is usually available in one or two forms. Active yeast, granulated yeast that must be activated in water. One packet equals one tablespoon. Compressed yeast. Moist live yeast sold in small cakes. Must be used within two weeks. One cake equals one packet of dry yeast. I've never used that. I've always used the dry yeast. Never made my own. I haven't yet. But I will, and I'll do a video when I do. <sighs> Easy, basic, and good white bread. And especially healthy white bread, guys. 
Assemble all the ingredients before starting. Okay, two cups of warm water. You don't want to assemble that before you start. Because it needs to be warm. And now see, this is a nice, uh, yeah, this is a nice recipe because it uses honey. Two tablespoons of honey. You just want to make sure you, you know, get your jar of honey out. You don't want to, that's, you know, that would be kind of hard to assemble too. One tablespoon of active dry yeast. Two tablespoons of light oil. Let's see, this recipe calls for that. I don't like that idea. If I was going to use oil, I would use coconut oil. Your vegetable oils, corn oils, canola oils, sunflower oil. All of those are highly processed and are really, 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 really bad for you. So, And olive oil, it turns into a carcinogen when it's cooked. So you don't want to use that. Two, ta two teaspoons of salt. Five to six cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. Oh, this is loud. Two tablespoons of raw wheat germ. And that can come right off from your own wheat. Half cup of non-fat dry milk. Or like you can go you could go on Amazon and get raw wheat germ. I'm sure. Alright, proofing yeast. The most critical judgment you can make comes at the very beginning. This is number one. When at the test when you test the temperature of the water in which you dissolve the yeast, it should be warm, not tepid, and not hot. Around 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. If you have a thermometer, use it. If not, run the water over your wrist. If it feels definitely but not uncomfortably warm, it's okay. Number two, put two cups of warm water in a large mixing bowl. Add the honey and the dry yeast. Stir. Set aside for a few minutes. It will take about 3 to 15 minutes, depending on the temperature of the water. As the grains of the yeast activate, they begin to foam. Combining ingredients. Number one, when the yeast is bubbly, add the oil, the salt, and two cups of flour. Two cups of the flour. Beat this... Ex Beat this mixture extremely well. This stimulates early development of gluten, the magic ingredient in the flour that gives bread lightness and a fine texture. And I mean, gluten, yeah, that's a whole different story. I'm going to have to bring my smaller plants in. The wind is starting to pick up. Sorry. If you have an electric mixer, use it <clears throat> to beat the mixture on medium speed for two minutes or longer. Otherwise, beat it with a wooden spoon at least 200 strokes. When you have finished beating, the surface of the dough may have a glossy look. This is a good sign. Number two, add the wheat germ and dry milk and mix them in. Then add two to three cups more of the flour a little at a time. This makes two millet two loaves. Mixing with a wooden spoon until the dough is too stiff to stir and pulls away from the sides of the bowl. Kneading. Number one, kneading is like dancing. Most any way you do it will be okay. A delicate touch is fine, but it will take longer to produce a state of elasticity. Energy and decisiveness will get you there more quickly. If you have a heavy-duty mixer with a dough hook, you can use it to knead. If you are kneading by hand, choose a kneading surface, breadboard, tabletop, or other clean surface that is about the level of your wrist where your arms are hanging at your sides. Anything higher will tire your shoulders. Number two, sprinkle the kneading surface with flour. Dip your hands in the flour, dump the dough out of the bowl and onto the surface. Turn the dough around and over to coat the outside with flour, patting it into a cohesive mass. Begin to knead. Number three, take the far side of the dough and fold it toward you, stretching the dough and then folding it as though you were folding a sheet of paper. With the heels of your hands, your floury hands, Push the folded portion down and away from you. Give the whole piece of dough a quarter turn, fold and push. Repeat. Each time you will be folding and pushing a different segment of the dough. Do it over and over. 
10 minutes is a good ballpark figure, and I always set a timer, and it always kills me to do that. The dough will be rough and sticky at first. You may have to keep dipping your hands and sprinkling flour onto the dough and onto the board. Add only as much flour as you need to keep the dough from being too sticky to work with. Too much flour makes a dry loaf. You want to end up with a dough that is smooth but still soft and pliable. When you push it, it springs back. Eventually, it will become smooth and satiny. First rise. Number one, rub a large bowl with soft butter or brush it with melted butter. Oil tends to be absorbed by the dough, when the, which then sticks to the bowl. Place the dough in the bowl and turn it until all sides are coated with a thin layer of butter or brush the top of the dough with melted butter. Cover the bowl with a kitchen towel. Number two, place the bowl in a warm, draft-free spot. Many people recommend the inside of the oven. If your oven has no pilot light, preheat it for a half a minute, turn it off, and put the bowl inside. Or put the bowl in the oven with a pan of hot water on the shelf below. Number three, let the dough rise until it has doubled in size. Number four, wow. You can test it by poking a finger into the top of the dough about an inch down. If the hole you have, you have made remains, it has risen enough. This can take anywhere from 45 minutes to several hours. If the dough gets away from you and rises too much more than double, it's best to punch it down and let it rise again in the bowl before you proceed. Uh, excuse me. Punching down. Give the dough a good sock with your fist. This is called punching down the dough. Take the dough over to the lightly floured work surface and dump it or pull it out of the bowl. Knead it a few minutes to press out gas bubbles. Then take a sharp knife and cut the dough into two equal pieces. Cover them with a towel and do something else for 5 to 10, 15 minutes while the dough rests. Preparing the pans. Stupid flies. Grease two 8 or 9 inch loaf pans. Use soft or melted butter, preferably unsalted. If you don't have loaf pans or prefer form, free form loaves, grease a baking sheet and sprinkle it lightly with cornmeal. Shaping. Take one piece of dough, pat it with your hands into a rough ball and flatten it into this... A size about twice as wide as your loaf pan and slightly longer. Fold the two long sides under so that they meet the middle of the bottom. Tuck the two short ends under. Gently press the loaf against the board to help the folded dough stick to itself. Place the shaped dough in the loaf pan or on a baking sheet. It should fill the pan no more than half full. Repeat this process with the remaining piece of dough. Brush the tops of the loaves with softer melted butter. Second rise in baking. Number one, cover the pans or baking sheet with a towel and put the loaves in a draft-free place to rise again until they double in size, usually 45 minutes to an hour. Meanwhile, preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 191 Celsius. Number two, place the pans in the oven and bake in about 25 to 30 minutes. Rest the impulse to open the door. Rest. Resist the impulse to open the door and peak during the first 15 to 20 minutes. Testing for doneness. When the bread is baked almost the minimum baking time, take a look. If the loaves are well browned and the sides have shrunk slightly from the sides of the pan, remove them from the oven. Tap the bottom of a pan to release a loaf. Turn out the loaf onto your other oven gloved hand. Give the bottom of the loaf a tap. If it makes a hollow sound, it is done. If it makes a dull thud, bake a few minutes longer. Number one. Finishing the bread. Number one. When done, turn out the loaves onto a wire rack to cool. If you like a softer crust, brush the loaves with melted butter, butter or cover the loaves with a towel as they cool on the rack. Number two. Bread doesn't slice well when it's hot, but the, sus but the suspense may be too strong to let you wait. So don't be disappointed if it's a bit doughy inside. The texture will improve as the bread cools. In any event, be sure to wait until the bread is thoroughly cool before wrapping it. Happy eating, and it makes two loaves. Note, whole wheat and rye flours make dough that is stickier and less elastic than white flour dough. It has been kneaded enough when it feels resilient. When rising whole wheat and rye dough, covering with a dampened towel helps prevent a crust from forming on the top. All right. <clears throat> Your favorite pan. If you don't have the pan called for in a recipe or want to make individual portions of quick bread, use a different container. Porcelain earthenware 
earthenware and metal will work. The times are meant as a guide. Watch the bread carefully. Pan size, one cup porcelain ramekin, 15 to 20 minutes baking time. Three cup pie pan, 15 to 20 minutes. Nine by five inch loaf pan, about an hour. Five and a half by three inch loaf pan, 30 to 40 minutes. One quart casserole, 40, 40 to 50 minutes. Dang it, super flies. Types of bread. Yeast bread may be the first thing that comes to mind when you think of homemade bread, but many other types are worth trying and test tasting as you explore and expand your bread making skills. Batter. Batter bread is beaten, not kneaded. With a heavy duty mixer, you can make superb breads with a little effort. They have a coarse crumb and chewy texture and a cratered surface like a lava flow. They have a yeasty flavor. They need more yeast because the gluten that supports rising is not completely developed by kneading. The flies are trying to get my food. Quick breads. Quick breads are almost effortless. Most are sweeter than many yeast breads, contain fruit and or nuts, and are leavened with baking powder and or baking soda. They have a crumbly, often crunchy texture. Sourdough. Yeast leavened breads are re relatively recent. For thousands of years, people leavened bread by tearing off a piece of dough and using it to start the next day's batch. These breads, which require the Use of a sourdough starter are coarser and chewier and have a heavier crust than yeast breads. All right, here we go. Quick breads. Company coming, company coming and time is running short. Quick breads are the perfect way to say welcome with fresh goods from the oven. Quick breads risen with baking powder or soda instead of yeast are fun to make and because they are so easy lend themselves to experimentation. Bake them fruit studded and herb scented as tea loaves or whip up some savory dinner breads with shredded vegetables, sausage, and peppers. Leftovers spread with unsalted butter or cream cheese. Make wonderful breakfast and lunchbox treats. Basic quick bread. Get your pen and paper, guys. This basic recipe can be enhanced with different, fla different flowers, spices, nuts, seeds, and fruits. It is not very interesting as it stands, so use it as a guide to create your own special breads. Here goes. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour, half a, half a tablespoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, quarter cup of butter or margarine. Do not use margarine, you guys. Margarine is really, 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 really bad for you. It shares 27 ingredients with paint. And I'm not kidding. That is information I've known for a long, long time, and it's stuff that you can find. So, real butter is the only way to go, you guys. Half a cup of sugar, raw cane sugar. Don't use your white refined sugars, and don't use bleached flour. One egg, best of its farm fresh. Three quarter cup of milk, and it would be awesome if that milk was raw right from your cow. In a large bowl, combine the flour, baking powder, and salt. In another bowl, cream the butter and sugar. Stir in the egg and mix well. Stir in the milk and add the liquid mixture quickly to the dry ingredients. Stir just enough to moisten completely. Spoon the mixture into a greased 9 by 5 inch loaf pan and bake at 350 degrees until a tester comes out clean. Cool in the pan for 10 minutes and then remove to a wire rack and cool completely. Makes one loaf. Additions. Be creative. Stir in fresh fruit. Excuse me. Stir in fresh or dried fruit and nuts. If you use fruit puree, use a little less fat. If you add or substitute an acidic ingredient such as applesauce or buttermilk, compensate for it by adding a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, and that was it for quick breads. I'm trying to rush through this, guys, so.
Okay. Goodbye, Spook. All right. The next thing is homemade pasta. And yes, it is possible to make homemade pasta. And I'm going to try it. Fresh pasta has a taste and texture so much richer than those of dried pasta that it's worth the extra preparation time. Simple fresh pasta. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now think, if that flour is made from your own homegrown wheat, harvested yourself, and ground yourself. Keep that in mind. Three large eggs, farm fresh, right from your own chickens. Half a teaspoon of salt. Redmond's real salt, so it contains all the minerals and everything that's healthy. Think about that. Number one, mound up the flour on a smooth work surface or in a very large bowl and make a well in the center. Two, beat the eggs and pour them into the center of the flour, adding salt if desired. Using a fork of your hands, combine the mixture until it is blended in a ball forms. Number three, continue kneading the dough until smooth and supple about five minutes longer if the dough feels too sticky sprinkle it with one tablespoon of flour and knead the flour into the ball if the dough feels too hard add one drop at a time of beaten egg or vegetable oil do not use vegetable oil it is really 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 processed hydrogen hydrogenated crap do not use vegetable oil Four, lightly grease a piece of plastic wrap with veg. I would use coconut oil. Do not use vegetable oil. Place the dough on the wrap and let it rest for at least 30 minutes before rolling it out. Or in that situation, you could use olive oil, but make sure it's. You have to make sure that, that you know the source that it comes from. A lot of the times, buying it off from the store shelf, you're not even getting olive oil, you're getting canola oil. And that's really bad for you. Mixing in a food processor. Number one, place the flour in the food processor bowl with the motor running. Add the eggs one at a time. Two, process until the mixture forms a ball. Three, if the dough becomes too sticky, add one tablespoon of flour and process for 10 seconds until incorporated. And then process for 40 to 60 seconds longer. See what flies. Four, remove the dough and wrap it in greased plastic wrap. Allow the dough to rest for at least 15 minutes before rolling it out. Rolling by hand. Number one, to make the dough more manageable, divide it into four pieces and place them on a lightly floured surface. Number two, roll each piece into a rectangle. The dough should be an eighth of an inch thick. So about like that. That's it. Turn my hand on the side. That's it, guys. Like that. That's it. Eighth of an inch. Actually, a little bit thinner. Eighth of an inch. For noodles, or a sixteenth of an inch thick for ravioli and can cannelloni, tortellini, lasagna, manicotti, and any other stuffed recipe. If you lay the rectangle onto a clean towel, and you can see the design of the towel through the dough. The dough is approximately 1 16th of an inch thick. Number three, to make noodles, roll the rectangle likewise in a jelly roll and slice off eighth to a quarter or a half inch width for noodles. Or two to four inch width for lasagna. To make canna cannelloni or manicotti cut the rectangle into four inch squares and drop them to a large pot of boiling water when the squares come to the top remove them immediately and place them on a clean towel when the excess moisture has been removed lay the squares on a tablecloth and fold the cloth so that it comes between all the squares they must not be touching if the pasta is not going to be used during the next hour place the folded tablecloth in a plastic bag, bag and refrigerate the pasta for up to two days it's kind of weird. Hmm. I'd have to watch something, like watch a video on that. To make ravioli, cut the rectangle into one and a half to two inch squares. Fill the squares with a prepared stuffing. Top each with another square and crimp the edges, then place them in a single layer on a lightly oiled or floured tray. Refrigerated until ready to use or freeze. 
When they are frozen, pack them into bags and seal. Cook in the frozen state. Rolling machine. Rolling by machine. Number one, cut the rested dough into four pieces, flatten and lightly flour each piece required. As each piece required. Flatten and lightly flour each piece as required. See, I can't talk right now. Keep all but one piece wrapped in the plastic to prevent them from drying out. Two, set the pasta machine at the widest setting and run a piece of flattened dough through the machine. Repeat this width four times, folding the dough in half each time. The dough will now be thoroughly kneaded and the rollers can be set closer together for this, each successive rolling to obtain the desired thickness. Number four, once the pasta has reached the desired thickness, allow the sheet to stiffen somewhat without drying out before running it through the cutter. Repeat for the remaining pieces of dough. Yields one pound. Variations. Substitute semolina durum wheat flour for the whole amount of all-purpose flour and use four eggs. Use only two eggs and add one half cup of pureed vegetables such as spinach, broccoli, beets, carrots, or red and yellow bell peppers. Combine the vegetables with the eggs before adding them to the flour. I wouldn't use the durum flour. Substitute whole wheat, buckwheat, trictocale, rye, or sem semolina flour for one cup of the all-purpose flour and add one half cup of pureed vegetables. Or add one half, one, one quarter to one half of cup of chopped fresh herbs such as parsley, basil, lemon thyme, or, uh, excuse me, or tarragon, a strong flavor. Try two to four tablespoons the first time. If using dried herbs, add only two to three tablespoons. Cooking perfect pasta. Figure on a, a quarter pound of pasta per person. Use four to six quarts of water to every pound of pasta. Cook in a large pot with room to spare. The extra space prevents the pasta from sticking together and helps it cook faster. The addition of one teaspoon of oil will keep the strands from sticking. Make sure you do not use vegetable oil. Bring the water to a rolling boil over high heat. Add one tablespoon of salt if desired. Redmond's Real Salt. Put the pasta in the water all at once. Using a wooden fork, gently stir to separate the strands or shapes. Return the water to a rolling boil, keep the pot uncovered, and lower the heat to medium to prevent it from boiling over. The pasta is done when it is tender but firm. The Italians call this al dente, firm to the bite. Cooking time varies according to the pasta, thick or thin, small or large, dried or fresh. If it's homemade, fried or fresh or dried, it may take as little as two minutes, so check frequently. When commercial dried pasta is used, follow the directions on the package, but choose the shorter time listed and then start testing by tasting several minutes before the end. This way you'll be assured of getting perfectly cooked al dente pasta. Sorry, I forgot. Sorry, guys. Drain pasta in a colander and serve immediately. When cooking manicotti, lasagna, or shells, drain and deposit on a clean tea towel to blot dry before use in a stuffed recipe. Do not rinse pasta unless it is to be chilled for a cold salad. Alright, there's one other thing I wanted to read for this. Oh, this is for bread making supplies and equipment. Necessities, yeast or some other leavening agent usually, water, flour, bowl or other container, wooden or similar strong spoon. Try to stay away from plastic. 
two knives and a fork for some kinds of mixing, surface for kneading, something to bake on or in, pan, cookie sheet, tile, coffee can, something. Something to cover the dough, towel, shirt, pillowcase, plastic wrap. Oven, stove top, fireplace, outdoor fire, wood cook stove, yeah. Measuring cup, measuring spoons. Helpful to have. A second bowl, electric mixer or hand beater, loaf pans, sharp knife, rubber spatula, single-edged razor for slashing loaves, pancake turner, pastry scraper, pastry brush, wire rack, reliable oven and or good oven thermometer, and instant read thermometer, and pastry blender. Options and frills. Two pastry brushes, one for melted butter, one for glazes, bread pans in many sizes, a variety of casseroles, souffle dishes, tube pan, fluted molds, special French bread pan. I don't have all this stuff, but a large convenient surface to use solely for kneading bread. I wish. I might actually build that into our kitchen or our cabin. Maybe. Heavy duty electric mixer with dough hook and plant mister for spraying. Don't worry about that. Oh, thank you. It's okay. Here. All right. So that was it for that. So that was it for baking the basics of making bread. Turned into kind of a longer video, but I kind of thought it might. So tomorrow we're going to start growing your, we're going to start the part on growing your own beer. And I'm going to get through that tomorrow, which is going to take us through that chapter. So anyway, so that's the basics on bread making and Go through like the beginning of the video and go ahead and write down the recipe and the instructions for my recipe and try it. Let me see what you think. Tell me what you think, guys. Oh, oh. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and get off from here and get this uploaded. I have to leave for work in about a half hour or so. I will see you guys tomorrow. Remember, guys, do your research. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.